Hi, this is Frank from Very Spatial, and welcome to this week's episode of Very Spatial TV. Today, I'm going to talk about my cartographic pet peeves. Hi everybody, glad you could join me again. Uh, today I'm gonna to talk a little about cartography. Uh, it's something that's really interesting to me. Uh, this topic was born from a series of meetings and I've had over the last, oh, six to 12 weeks or something like that in various places where cartography has really been featured in one form or the other. And it got to me thinking that there are some things about cart cartography that really kind of annoy me when I see them. And it's a conversation that I just decided I wanna get out in the air. I'm going to list my cartographic pet peeves. These are, there's, there's five of them. Uh, they're in no particular order. That, that, that's a total lie. They're in the order that I can remember them. That's, they're not ranked, but that's, that's the actual order. And neither are more annoying than the other. Okay, that's another lie. There's a good 20, 25% chance during this video, I'm going to say the phrase, this one annoys me the most. And it's probably going to be on more than one of them. So, you know. What are you going to do? So let's get started. Okay, so the first one that really annoys me are north arrows. Okay, not just north arrows. What I mean by that is that people seem to think that you have to have a north arrow everywhere. They put them all over the map. It's big, giant north arrows. And they're nice and pretty and garish, to be honest with you. And they seem to be taking over a lot of people's maps. Here's the thing, though. The vast majority of maps that I see don't really need a north arrow to start with. If you're showing something that people should generally know where north is, you don't really need a north arrow, especially if you're orientating it in a direction that is fairly typical. So if you're talking about, for example, North America, if you've got Canada up here and Mexico down here, most people in the world should be aware that that's north and that's not. So you don't really need a north arrow to depict that you certainly don't need one that's really, really big. Now I get why you would want to do that because it's something that's beat into you early on. You need a north arrow. And there are places where north arrows are really important. And that's when you have like a body that nobody really knows. Like if you have this county that next to nobody knows the geography of, maybe you do need a north arrow. Or if you're doing something in a weird direction, so north is that way for some reason that makes sense on your map, then you do need a north arrow, but it doesn't have to be big. It's just a little, really, a line with, with an N at the top. It's all you really need. It doesn't have to be... It's it just, you don't. And, and related to this are neat lines. So everybody wants to put neat lines all over the place. Why? It's in the name. They're neat. I get it. I, I like neat things. I mean, mostly. But neat lines are nothing more than a way of visually separating out a piece of information. So here's the thing below the neat line, and here's the thing above the neat line, and I don't want you to confuse the two things. And that can be very important, but they're actually not necessary if your map has already got that built in in some form or fashion. For example, if your map's one sheet and it's just the map, you don't really need a neat line because the map is the neat line, effectively, right? Or if you've got uh, um, something, so you have like one set of color and then a completely set of color. It, the two colors contrasting, for example, if the map ends in blue because it's surrounded by water and the stuff above it is in a different color, say white or, or, or a beige or something like that, it's the background to whatever it is that your map appears inside of, it, the two colors meeting each other, that, that's, that's your neat line. So I know the basic books will tell you, you need a north arrow, you need neat lines, but you don't necessarily have to have these elements associated in there. And, and you should think about that. Is it necessary to communicate what I want to do? Okay, so this is one that is, it's kind of a broad one, I grant you. I'm just gonna hit on a few topics, but it's making everything flat. And I know what you're thinking, it, it's the paper map. It, it, it's a map, it's on a screen, it's on a mobile device, it's on a piece of paper. It's gotta be flat, right? Because the world's round, so it's gotta be flat. That's not what I'm talking about. All right, so there is a lot of science behind things like color the theory and symbology. And there's a lot of things that we know. Uh, for example, the human eye picks up certain colors relative to other colors better than certain other colors. 
you know this immediately. If you've ever seen light gray text on a white background and you struggle and you're doing one of these to figure out what the heck that thing says. This is a great example of that. We like contrast. When we read things like text, we like a dark text on a light background or conversely, a light text on a dark background. It makes it things pop. So instead of having a flat look, they have a depth to them. Even though it's on a flat map, admittedly, there is a depth there. So you need to have some consciousness of the things that you want to pop. So the colors can really help do that. And another area that's related to this is symbols. Okay, so there's obviously we know in GIS and traditional Esri dominated GIS, we have a lot of vector stuff and it's a point line polygon, right? And there's rasters too. I don't want to generate those, but so in the point line and polygon, we look at our data model and we say this stuff is best represented by a dot. This is by a line and this by a polygon. All right, now that's fine, but you have to understand the way you actually put those on the map has a huge impact on how people interpret that. If we use a solid color black for our polygons and the same thing for our lines, it becomes very hard to understand what is the line feature and what is the polygon feature. Now, most people get that. I mean, you don't see a lot of that, but what you do see a lot of is a subtle change in color. So you'll have a black outline for your polygon and like a gray linear feature. Well, those two things kind of meld together visually. Remember the color thing? We just talked about the colors, contrast, makes it pop. So what you want to do is you want to pick symbologies, particularly where, where these features interact or, or, or connect with each other in such a way that one kind of dominates over the other. It pops out. Pops. That's no flats. Pops. Okay, so another thing related to this, and it's tangential, but it is part of this sort of flat maps, is maps have a balance. So if you've got a, a map that's this big, okay, let's just say that's your sheet, whatever it may be, and you have your map so that most of the features are on this side of the map, it looks unbalanced. If you imagine that this was mass instead of just some cartographic drawings, if you put this on a, on a point like this, if you put the sheet on there and all the mass is over here, it would tip over. That's what we mean by balance, okay? So what you really need to do visually is make sure that things are balanced out. You need to move the things to the center so there's more balance. And this is really important when we go back to our last point. So we're doing neat lines and, and, and north arrows and, and all those type of things, legends and scale bars and all this associated information. We need to put those things around our map in such a way that it's balanced. If we put it all on one side, it becomes unheavy. And again, with the balance thing where things just sort of like that. So you have to have thought to what you're trying to symbolize, the map, but you also have thought to the sort of associated bits of the map and where to put those. You don't want a top load, you don't want a bottom load, you don't want a left to right load. You need to have it sort of around the area. And, it, and it's balanced and it's very pleasing to the eye. You, you feel like there's a lot of information wherever you look. And, and that's a problem I see with a lot of maps. Okay, on to the next one. And I'm gonna break my rule. This is the one that bugs me the most easily. The problem we have here, biggest cartographic mistake that bugs the heck out of me is too much information. All right, now we are in information science built into the title, right? Geographic information science. We like information. So more information, more better. That's our rule. That's, that's how we live. And when we're trying to analyze things, it's great to have a GIS that has loads and loads and loads of layers and bits of information. And you can ask questions like, well, what if I compare it to that? Or what if I do a barf on this? Or what if I get the points connected together in this way? And I can tap it into all these different bits of information. And that's the power of GIS. So that's awesome. It's also really annoying when you're doing cartography that way because when you're doing a map, you should have a focus point. Now I'll get to that in a minute, but the point is, is that more information doesn't make your map better. It makes it more cluttered. So one of my biggest pet peeves is labels. People like to label everything. Sometimes you need labels. You need labels to indicate where the heck a piece of, uh, uh, where a populated places or a, person, a place of interest or something like that. You may need labels to indicate the point of the map, the things that you want people to understand, but you don't need to label every driveway in some form or fashion. 
it gets busy and it makes it really hard to see what's going on. So labels are one of the worst I've seen this for, but even basic data layers, you'll add in snuff that you don't really need to communicate what you're trying to communicate. Great for your GIS, annoying for your cartography. Okay, and related to this is the flip of that. Some people do it the other way, is they don't have enough information. So the thing is, is that, yes, you need to have a focal point, and that's the part that you really should focus on, but if you've got, particularly if you've got an enormous blob, like a county or something like that, you've got to have some way to get, so people can figure out where the heck they are. People don't necessarily know your spatial information as well as you do. Uh, hopefully, you know it better than anybody, because job security. But they need to figure out where they're at. So. I see so many maps that don't include basic orientation information like a roadway or, or waterways or, or major towns or cities because it allows you to figure out as a user, here's the city, here's the interstate, oh okay, the area of interest is down here. I kind of know where that's at. And why this is really important is because people don't look at maps abstractly. They don't look at them in a vacuum. We have our own mental maps. We, we are aware at some point the area, even if it's an area we've never been to, maybe we've heard about it or seen a video on it or, or any number of things. We've got a mental map and we like to liken, we like to connect the things we're looking to to other things. Remember, toddler's first law, all things are connected. People like to do that, it's a thing. So we like to connect these pieces of information and you need those orientation bits, even though it may make your map a little more challenging, to connect where you're at. And it's an important bit, and I see too many maps that don't include it. We like to think that our maps that we spend so much time on are completely transportable across mediums. They aren't. They really, really aren't. Things that work well in small print, like an eight and a half by 11, most of us have access to a printer, so we do a lot of printing of that size. They don't necessarily work well in big print. In a meeting recently, I said there was something that the people were using that the client suggested they wanted, and I suggested to the client that that way of symbolizing on a big piece of paper doesn't really work. I think I called it an abomination of cartographic kind. But when you move down to the eight and a half by 11, it makes a lot more sense. I think part of the problem in this particular case was the eight and a half by 11 is what they were seeing because that's what they were printing on. And then when we moved to a big size, it didn't work so well. So you have to be aware of your paper maps. What, where, what's the format? Where are they gonna be at? How are people gonna use them? Are they gonna fold them up, put them in their back pocket? Are they gonna carry on with them? Are they gonna be on a nice wall here so that you can sort of look at it and refer to it? And that should drive a lot of your cartographic decisions. We make the assumption and we make our one good map, it'll work in all contexts. You can't make that assumption, you've gotta test it. And the part that drives me insane, this also bugs me in the top, is when you assume the print version will work on an interactive medium. The, what we can do on a digital screen is so much more powerful in so many different ways that why limit yourself to what you can only do on a paper screen? I just said paper screen. Papers don't have screen. That's silly. To what you can do on paper. And by the same token, what you can do on paper, you can't do on the screen. The next person who grabs a pen and tries to mark out my screen, I'm gonna wrap them on the knuckles like I was a nun from the 20s in a school system. Just don't do that. Don't be that person. So, Think about the medium that you're going to have your product in and design for that because those things can do different things well and other things can do other things well. And why not take advantage of the things that you can take advantage of and not worry about things you, you don't need to worry about because it's not appropriate for the medium. Okay, the last one is thinking outside the map. You need to learn to think outside the map. And what do I mean by that? All right, so there's two parts of this. The first is your map itself. Let's just say that you've decided that you're gonna make a great map, but let's say your map isn't the only thing that's gonna be represented in this particular product that you're creating. So your map may be a piece in a greater whole. It may be a report, it may be a poster, it may be any number of things, maybe a website, you name it. And you have to think, how does my map fit within the greater whole? Is there things that 
don't necessarily need to be in my map because they're in the greater whole. And therefore, you can kind of help manage some of the other things I've talked about, colors and representation and white space and whether you need to include things or not include things or if you have too much information or not enough information. Those things, you can take advantage of the greater whole to sort of orientate yourself to a lot of that. And that's really powerful. You need to think about that. But you can need to take it a step further because sometimes the information that you're trying to represent, the knowledge that you've created with your geographic information science may not, may not, I know it's blasphemy, but it may not be best represented by a map. Sometimes your representations are better represented by other things, and you need to be aware that other visualizations can be just as powerful and it's just as useful in representing the spatial knowledge that you've created in a way that's very useful for your users. All right, so those are my pet peeves. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about them, uh, if you want to give me a little pushback, some things that you didn't think were accurate, or if you want to put your own pet peeves in, please, you know, comments down below. They help a lot. If you enjoy the video series, please like it. Uh, it does give us some feedback as to what you may or may not be enjoying. And uh, if you'd like to see more like this, uh, please subscribe. Uh, you can also head over to veryspatial.com slash Patreon or patreon.com slash veryspatial and give us some support if you're able or if you would like to. It helps us with the podcast. We're entering our 15th year, so we'd like to do some special things next year. Uh, it also helps to make videos like these. So uh, thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Uh, I've been Frank at Very Spatial TV. Mm -hmm.